fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Whenever men gathered around the campfire, in the days when the West was young, stories were told of the masked rider of the plains. Astride his great horse, Silver, he fought crime and criminals throughout the western United States. And no man did more to bring law and order to a lawless frontier. Now, from out of the past, come the thundering hoofbeats of Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. As our story opens, night is falling on the trail to Jackson City. The Lone Ranger and Tonto have been riding for the greater part of the day and are now preparing to make camp. There, good way. Yes, Tonto, I think it'll do. We make camp early. We get up early. We're both tired from our trip. Oh, we get good rest. This is fine here. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, fine, Tonto. We can find plenty of wood around here for our fire. Uh, that, that right. Well, it looks as though others thought this was a good camping place. Oh, there are plenty track here. You can see where they built their fire. Doesn't look as though they could have been gone long. Maybe four, five hours. How many men would you say were here, Kimosabe? Mm, five, six. Probably cowboys who stopped to cook a meal. Look. Look there. Cigarette stuff. Oh. And loco weed. Loco weed? Oh. That's dangerous stuff to smoke. I've seen it turn men into killers. Oh, many bad color use them. Perhaps those men weren't cowboys after all. Until not know. Did you hear that horse, Kima? Huh? Silver hear him, too. I wonder who's riding here. Maybe more fella may camp here. I'd rather not answer questions about this mask. Or come this way, all right. There he is. And he hasn't a rider, Kimosabe. Uh. Here, old fellow. Look, he answers all right. Here you are, boy. He wants to go back. He acts as though he's trying to tell us something. What's the matter, old fellow? That's plenty strange. I think he wants us to go with him. Come, Tonto. We follow him? Yes. We'll get our horses and see if he leads us anywhere. That's a good idea. Steady, Silver. Yeah. Him in plenty big hurry. All right, old fellow. We'll follow along. Come on, Silver. Get him up, my fellow. Tonto, he's taking us toward that woods. Ah. Oh. Did you 
see anything wrong, Kimosabe? What? What that there? There's something on the ground. Looks as though it might be a man. Oh. Come on, Silver. Here we are. Hold on, Silver. Oh, oh fellas. Oh, I oh, oh. No, no. This man is dead. Huh? Me. Me take a look. A young fellow, too. Uh -huh. Him. Him get shot through back. Shot in the back. Uh, him die quick. Can you tell how long he's been dead, Tonto? Maybe three, four hour. Three or four hours? Uh. That's the same time you thought those men left the place we stopped to camp. Mm. There. Their track. Hoof prints. Must have been at least five or six horses here. Isn't that right? They're going horse, follow trail. This man was probably a member of the gang. I wonder if there's anything to identify him with. There, watch. Let me see it. Uh, there. Here, watch. Thanks. There's a picture in the back. Dan Kent. That must be this man's name. Uh? I want to go through his pockets. There may be something to show where his home was or who his folks were. You take a look. Well, there's nothing in this pocket. Wait. The letter is something in the shirt pocket. Maybe that tell you. I have it. I think we're justified in reading this letter under the circumstances, Tutter. Uh, what did it say? One moment. It seems to be from his mother. She can't read or write. No? How you know that? She says here that her foreman is writing the letter for her. Oh. What more it say? Nothing of importance, Tato. Just news about herself. And hopes for her son's happiness. Nothing that explains his death. Uh, that heap bad. She seems to have thought he was leading an honest life. Him get shot by bad fella. Why do you say that, Kimosabe? Him shot in back. Good fella not do that. You're right. What we do now? I think we'll investigate this further. Perhaps we'll be able to find the murderers and learn why Dan was killed. Uh. Here, Silver. We'll examine these tracks, Tonto. We may be able to recognize them again. Tonto, no. Yep. <coughs> Maybe I can follow these tracks, but I'll have to hurry. It get dark plenty quick now. Yes. You stay here and take care of Dan's body. Uh, Tonto, do that. Come on, Silver. Jackson City was a typical western town. It boasted little more than a main street, a group of weather-beaten homes, a cafe, jail, and a stagecoach office. Red Murphy was the manager of the coach line, and we see him now at his desk. The door of the office opens, and a little old lady enters. Why, howdy, Miss Kent. Hello, Mr. Murphy. I just come to see about the stage. You sit right down. It ain't often I get to see you anymore. Oh, oh you needn't give me your chair. Well, thank you. Uh, I reckon I'm getting to the age where a body don't care much about standing on their feet no more than they have to. You weren't aiming to go no place in the stage, was you? <laughs> My, no. Traveling ain't for such as me. I just come to see if a package come from my boy. Uh, which one, Miss Kent? Pete down Frisco Way or Dan that you say is mine in Auburn, Colorado? This package was to come from Pete, Mr. Murphy. I recollect you were getting a letter from Pete the other day. That's how come I'm here. He written his letter that there'd be a package of cash for me on the next stage. Of cash? Mm-hmm. $600. Pete sending you all that? He's a mighty fine boy, Pete is. He's sending it because he heard I'm liable to lose my place if I can't get tax money together. By golly, Pete must be doing darn well for himself. Oh, he always was smart, even when he was a young'un. Yeah, I can remember him. It was Dan that was the wild one, weren't he? No, there weren't nothing wrong with Dan. Maybe he was a mite reckless about choosing his friends. 
And he was one to have a good time when there was a chance for it. He settled down now, all right. Well, I'm glad to hear it. But uh, ain't there no package, Mr. Murphy? Sure, she needn't go to worry, Miss Kent. The stage just ain't come in yet. Oh. You see, there's been a heap of trouble on the trail lately. There's been landslides, and the bridge went out over to Willow Creek, and all kinds of things. The stage ain't come in on time for the past week. But uh, but have you any notion when it'll be here? I'm downright sorry, but I can't say as to that neither. Maybe it won't show up till tomorrow sometime. Oh, then I don't reckon there's much use in waiting any longer. You ain't riding back to your place, are you? It's a mighty long ride for a body like me, but I might just as well. Now, why don't you stay over at my place? The missus would be glad to put you up. No, I think I'd better be getting back. Well, suit yourself, Miss Kent. You'll look out for my package, won't you? I sure will. Thank you. And if I don't get in for it tomorrow, you hold it till I do. I'll watch it like it was my own. Goodbye, ma'am. Good day. There goes one of the finest old ladies i ever seen. She's dead up again it, but she's got more spunk than a dozen men. Red Murphy. Huh? Golly, where'd you come from? I came in the back door. You're masked. There ain't nothing here for you to take. Honest, there ain't. I'm I not a thief. I'm here to ask you some questions. Is, is that all you want? It is. Was that old lady who just left here, Mrs. Kent? Uh, yeah, that, that was her. And I thought it was. I went to her home and found she'd come here. You ain't planning to harm her, now, are you, stranger? You, you wouldn't do that, would you? She ain't got nothing for you to steal. She has a son named Dan? Yes, but I... Does can... she know where he is? What business is that of yours, mister? I ain't... Answer me. Well, I... I reckon she does. She sent him a letter by my stage up Denver Way once. That was quite a spell ago. He's supposed to be mining. Yes, I saw that letter. Uh, mister, don't do nothing to hurt Miss Kent. She's old and feeble. You like her? Well, I should say I do. They don't come no finer. What would you do to keep her from being harmed? Why, I'm just like the other folks around here that knows her. I do most anything. Red, her son Dan is dead. Dead, you say? Yes. And the men who killed him are right here in this district. How come you know that? Red, I want to know this. Does Mrs. Kent own anything of value? Anything that outlaws would want to steal? There's nothing that I know of. Are you sure? I ought to be sure. Even the cattle she owns ain't worth the stealing. I told you she ain't got nothing. What's that? By golly, it must be the stage. Drat it, Miss Kent just missed it. She was looking for the stage? I ain't got the time to talk to you now, stranger. I got to see to the stage. But you stay on. There's things I want to ask you. I'll wait for you. Yep, had a good run this time. Here, take this package. It's for Miss Kent. Throw it down. There you are. And take it this inside. You go on with the unloading, then unhitch the horses. I'll be out to help you. Sure, Ed. Oh, golly, I forgot you were still here. What's in that package for Mrs. Kent? I, uh, I don't know. Don't lie to me, Red. But it I... It may be important. Well... I'll tell you what it is. It's cash, that's what. And stranger, the fellow that tries to take it away from me is going to get shot full of lead. That's exactly what I wanted to know. I'll leave the way I came in. But hold on. I wonder where he's going. I shouldn't have never left his back door open. Hey, wait. I called his horse Silver. And I was wondering if he was straight or not. <laughs> well, I should smile. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue the story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, stopping to make camp near Jackson City, were met by a riderless horse that led them to the body of Dan Kent, who had been shot in the back. The masked man and his companion followed the tracks of the killers to the Kent Ranch. Then the Lone Ranger rode to town where he learned that a package of money had just arrived from Mrs. Kent by the stage. As our second act opens, we see the masked man reining in his great horse at the camp he shares with Tonto. Oh, hold the horse, honey, that. Oh, oh, boy. Tonto! Uh, yeah. You get back soon. I think I've learned why outlaws rode to the Kent Ranch. Why that? Mrs. Kent is expecting money from another son. How outlaw know about cash? I'm not sure, but I believe I know the answer. Kent woman know son Dan outlaw? I don't think so. And we won't let her find it out unless we have to. Oh, I'm not good. There are still things we have to do before we can catch the outlaws. Isn't that right? I want you to find the sheriff and his deputies. Don't tell them anything, but learn where to locate them if we need them in a hurry. How to do that? We must be sure to be ready for whatever happens. hard drive for Mrs. Kent from town to her home, and when she arrived there, she was surprised to see a number of horses standing outside the house. She climbed down from the buckboard, and when her foreman, Clem, came up to lead the horse away, she asked him about the visitors. Clem, who's the folks come to see me? Joseph Jensen aims to speak to you. Uh, you get that package off the stage, ma'am? The stage is late, so I didn't wait for it. Hmm. Are they strangers, Clem? Uh-huh. Uh, the folks in the house. Oh, them. Well, ma'am, maybe they're strangers to you, but they ain't to me. I wonder what they want. You'll find out soon enough, I reckon. Oh, I haven't a notion why anybody'd be calling on me. They won't be backward about telling you. Oh, what are you coming in for, Clem? I thought you was going to stable my horse. I got some things to say to you, too. Hey, here she is, boys. Been waiting for you, ma'am. Yes. This is Duke Reavers, Miss Kent. He'll do all the talking for us. What talking? <laughs> you went to town for a right important package, didn't you, Miss Kent? Oh, what's that to you? You'd be surprised. You didn't fetch it back with her, Duke. The stage wasn't in yet. Clem, did you tell these fellers about that package? Sure, I did. <laughs> we know all about that cash, Miss Kent. So it won't do you no good to lie about it. You you mean... We mean we want it, we're going to have it. Clem, they're aiming to rob me. Well, and what of it? And and you're in with them. Of course I am. How else do you think they'd know enough to come here? To, to think you'd do a thing like this to me. Talking won't help. I, I paid you good money, and now you turn on me. I ain't interested in hearing about that. All we want is that cash. Well, it won't do you no good. I never bring it with me. So Clem said. And you won't be able to get it. <laughs> you think not? I know you won't. Red Murphy will keep it when it gets here. And he won't give it up to nobody but me. There's ways of getting around that. <laughs> you, you low, mean, ornery coyote. Clem, you hold a gun on her. I'll do that. Holding a gun on a woman. You won't get hurt unless you go against orders. Now sit down over here, Miss Kent. There's a pen and paper. Clem's already read out what we want. You just put your mark on it. Well, what's that paper say? Never you mind about that. You just sign it. And the rest you can leave to me. Mrs. Kent, helpless in the hands of the outlaws, signed the paper written by her foreman and gave it to Duke. We immediately left the house, mounted, and rode for town. Get along there. Get along. Come on. Get along there. Get up there. Come on. Get along. Get along. Get along. Get along. The Lone Ranger, riding toward the Kent place, saw Duke racing by and pulled Silver to a stop. Oh, oh Silver. Oh, boy. Oh. Silver. That fellow came from the Kent Ranch, and he's heading for town. He's one of the outlaws. We may be too late. 
I want to see the hoof prints of his horse. <coughs> Silver, he is one of them. Tonto and I followed that same track before. We've got to get back to town and find Tonto right away. Yep. All right, old fellow, we'll have to hurry. Hi, In the meantime, Duke continued on into town. There, with a signed paper in his hand, he halted before the stage office, dismounted, and strode inside. Red Murphy looked up in surprise at the sound of the door. You the manager here? Uh-huh. What can I do for you? Read this here note. It'll tell all that needs to be told. Yeah. Give it here. Ah. It says Miss Kent wants me to give you the package that was to come addressed to her. And what it says? I didn't know nothing about it. She just handed it to me and told me to ride here with it. Uh-huh. Uh, stage come in yet? Oh, it's been here all right. Was the package on it? Yeah, it's here. Then give it to me if that's what the note said. I gotta be getting back. I don't know about that. Huh? I sort of figured she'd be coming after it herself. She was here once, wasn't she? Didn't she have the whole trip for nothing? Yeah, I know. Then what's troubling you? Well, I don't savvy why she sent back for it so soon. She told me she'd be in tomorrow. Maybe it's something she wants real bad. It's that, sure enough. But I don't know. Blast it, hand it over and be done with it. Just who are you, anyhow? You work for Miss Kent? Of course I do. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, would I? It's a powerful, important package. I can take care of it. Uh-huh. And for all I know, maybe you take care of it too darn well. Say... Just what are you hidden? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I was just sort of thinking out loud. No, got it. What do you want that old woman to do? Ride all that ways back to town just because you're too stubborn to do like she asks? I got another idea. Yeah? There ain't nothing much doing here now. Maybe I could spare the time to run out there with this myself. Why, it? There ain't no need of that. Oh, shucks. It won't be no trouble. I Ryan, just... Um... Let this man take the package. A mask, fella. You here again? Give him the package. It'll be dark before he gets to the ranch now. Why should I do what you say? I think you will. No, wait. There ain't no reason to get your hands so blame close to them six guns. Take the package, dude. Yeah. Take it to Mrs. Kent. She sent you for it. There's no reason she shouldn't get it. Tom Gollard, you shouldn't have butted in like this. Go ahead, Duke. The mask killer's got more sense than you have, Red. I, I hope everything's all right. <laughs> There's something darn funny about this. And all the time I figured you were straight in spite of your mask. You'll have to trust me, Red. But all that cash. Miss Kent needs it so bad. And if I don't get to her, Mrs. You... Kent will get her money. But that fellow looks like a crook to me. He is a crook. Then look here, I'll why... take that note he brought with him. No, wait. Eh, I'm going now, Red. But don't worry. Mrs. Kent and her money are safe. The rest of the band of outlaws had made themselves comfortable in Mrs. Kent's home while they awaited the return of their leader. Mrs. Kent tried to face them bravely. And as a last resort, she attempted an appeal to the treacherous foreman. Clem, haven't you no decency at all? Can't you see the wickedness of what you're doing? Keep still, won't you? The, the only reason I want that cash is so I won't lose my place. It's just enough to cover my taxes. And if they ain't paid, everything I got will be took away from me. Jerks, you ain't got that long to live anyhow. <laughs> the cash is worth a heap more to us fellas than it is to you. <laughs> Clay. Yeah. There's Duke pulling up in front of the house. He's got the package with him. <laughs> He's holding it under his arm. Good. <laughs> By golly, it worked, Duke. That Murphy fellow was darn stubborn, but... I got the cash just the same. We'll divvy it up and then get out of here. Yeah. I was just wondering. What's the matter now? We got the cash, all right. But I don't like the idea of leaving anybody behind that can tell the law about us. Yeah. I was thinking the same. You mean we Jim, ought to... You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do yes, that. Yes, us. We got to look out for... No, Maybe no. you're right, Clem. I don't see nothing else to do. But as long as it's your idea, 
You can take care of it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All you fellas set to pull out? Yeah, we're settled up. Now that we got the cash, there ain't nothing holding us. You just think there ain't nothing holding us. Listen, Law. Come on in, boys. I hope they get here. Don't try to go for your gun. We ain't got a chance. Sheriff, Sheriff, sure, sure, thank heavens you've come. This is the last fellow brought us, Miss Kent. He's the fellow that made Red Murphy give me the cash. I did that so we'd have enough evidence to arrest you. Bless you. Then you're a law and a snake for what you've done. How did you trap us? The last fellow followed your trail here. He followed... Careful, Sheriff. Thanks, Sheriff. I was sort of forgiven. I know what the sheriff was about to say. Yes? He was going to tell about Dan. Get him, Tonto. Let me get him. Get that rope off of me. Hold him, Tonto. Let me do that. We told oh, you. You're not getting away from me. What did he start to say, Mask oh, Man? What is he going to say about Dan? I'll tell you later, Mrs. Kent. Well, we might as well be taking these fellows along to jail. He ain't taking me. Let's make a break for it, Clem. You're doing right up. That'll hold you. <laughs> oh, you wink me in the shoulder. Well, I'm darn sorry I didn't finish you up. My hand... That was a darn quick shot, stranger. I saw him go for his gun. My hand is smashed. Smashed? The masked fellow just shot the gun out of it. Take these men away, Sheriff. Come along, you fellas. If the masked fellow hadn't meddled in me, he did. Blame lucky thing. Now get out there. My deputies will take care of you. I, I can't thank you enough for what you've done. There's no need. You said something about Dan. We saw your son, Mrs. Kent. You did? I know you worried about him. Well, sometimes he, he didn't always do just what he should. There's only one thing I can say. You needn't worry about his going wrong any longer. You sure of that? Yes, Mrs. Kent. Come, Tonto. Uh, oh, but wait. There's more I want to ask you about Dan. We may meet again, Mrs. Kent. I sure hope so. You will not tell her, Dan, bad fella. I couldn't do it, Kimasabe. She always thought of him as being honest and upright. She must never know the truth. Yep. Mm -hmm. Steady, Silver. Tonto, Tonto, think you right. Yes, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Get him up, white fella. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>